right, let's go, guys. It's grand final time for the ESL NA Weekly number 171. Dark is in the bottom left side of the map, and his opponent, Clem, in the top right, doing something that he literally never, ever does, and I've criticized him so much for it, and that is a proxy. I thought it was going to be a marine proxy, but he's getting a gas. He's going to proxy two racks Reaper in a Terran vs. Uh, oh my, I hope he's got a defense ready for a counterattack, because I know Dark likes to counterattack against these sort of builds. Once he's defended it with either a big Bane Bust or a Roachling Ravager push, something like that. We'll see how it goes. Hot diddly diddly damn. Sorry, I was stopping to type there for a moment on my keyboard. Just had to check something. Uh, Reapers are on the way. Now, notice that Dark is checking the left side of the map. He will not see this until the Reapers jump into his base. And where's his front overlord going? His front overlord will go straight in the base. So he will see no command center, and that will tip him off. But I actually think these Reapers coming in will do it even earlier. Oh, no. People keep stopping. You guys are going to make me put my stupid shirt on, aren't you? Oh, God. Why is Twitch chat so obsessed with nipples? I swear. Anyways, uh, Reapers are being produced two at a time. We've got a second gas building as well. Bunker is going to go up in the main base. Spinecrawler's there. Ooh. Okay. Here we go. Drone's being pulled. That bunker's very annoying. He's got to try to fight it off. Great micro so far by Clem, though. Almost gets one of those. Oh, he didn't mineral walk the SCV. Good micro by Dark. Oh my god, the SCV is going to die, but okay, that Reaper really should circle back in, I think. It's dangerous, but I think it's worth. Get that SCV out of there. Get the SCV out of there. Okay, the SCV ends up being bait. I mean, he still gets a drone and four Zerglings, and there's a few in the red that are easy targets for future waves. The Spine Crawler coming up is not a bad idea. Oh, I like the pullback. Just being very cautious. Didn't want the Spine to kill that Reaper. And he's gonna get he's gonna have to pull out. Ling's gonna go for a backstab, I believe. No, they're just sitting on the natural. The spine's gonna move to the natural. Interesting. The queen one drops a creep tumor to connect the bases. The other one injects. Queen already takes a fair bit of damage. The Reapers block the spine crawler for a moment, but they're never gonna kill that. For those who don't know, Reapers have two four damage attacks. A spine crawler has two armor, which means it's literally halving their damage output. So. Ooh, good pullback on the damaged Reaper for Clem. Okay, and he's still building Reapers two at a time. Command Center's on the high ground. He wants to go Reactor on the factory. Link Speed's going to be done in the near future. And uh, keeping Dark off the third base seems to be mighty effective. Link Speed, though, almost done. He's up to 10 Zerglings is Dark. Now, if Dark keeps massing them, he kind of needs to get us around. But if he goes back to drones, he might be able to just play the longer game. As it is, more, yeah, 10 more lings, of course. I was going to say it's dark, so he's probably just going to keep making Zerglings. And he'll probably almost certainly get the surround and then some, somehow just win the game automatically afterwards because his name's Dark and he wins games he has no business winning. Speaking of which, big ling run by going around. The barracks are floating back. There's only six Reapers on the map. They could get surrounded, so I kind of feel like they should stay near a ledge. Watch out! Watch out, Clem! Oh, Clem's not watching. GG. GG. Oh, man. Well, if not for the game, for the Reapers at least. He's going to lose all of those Reapers. He's trying to fight, but they're going to get taken out, man. He does take out quite a few of these Zerglings. Really good micro by Clem, but it's just that first catch with his Reapers kind of spread out like that. I don't think he expected Link Speed to be ready so fast. He does kill a lot of Zerglings, and of course, the fact that Dark built so many Zerglings is already not good for him. And with those reacted Hellions on the way, I think it's a very playable position. It's just scary because there's such a tendency for Dark to then get a Ling backstab in when the natural floats down, defend the Hellions at home, do counter damage, and, and run away with the game. Easy ahead on paper? Maybe a little, but even that's questionable when you look at the amount of tech. I mean, there's a Viking that's going to go hunting Overlords. You've got a Fusion Core for a Battlecruiser swap. Hellions are out. I mean, this is a pretty damn good setup for Clem in terms of the tech. Even if he's down 10 workers and his natural's only just floating out, no third command center started, He's going to have a really early battle cruiser. Dark, though, even on just two hatcheries, has been non-stop building queens. Viking is going to deny this Overlord. Overlord doesn't really see much at all other than the fact that there are SCVs starting to move down here. And notice there's always a few Hellions on the ramp. Clem not leaving them out front, so he'll spot Zerglings coming in and have time to respond. Dark wanted an insanely fast fourth base there. Dark is... is lo he loves those fourth bases. He's building an 8th queen, he cancels the extractor, takes the 4th. 
Before his third has even started mining, he starts a fourth base. Wow. And you know, if he gets away with it, he really does get quite far ahead in these games. Very few other Zergs do this. Like, Solar always has a very conservative fourth base timing. I always criticize him for being late. Dark is uh, on the border of being too early. Now, he sees a starport making with no cloak. No bubbles going. Immediately, three Spore Crawlers do start up. He's making a ninth queen as well. Battlecruiser, Yamato, and a second starport? Oh, Clem's lucky he didn't see that. Aliens run in and get three drones. So Clem's going to harass with a battlecruiser. He's going to teleport the first one right in. He's going to be like, oh, look, here's a single battlecruiser. I'll see what damage I can do. Ha ha ha. But he, he's, he's going to make out like it's just one or two battlecruisers. And then he's going to teleport two more in behind this. Oh, yeah, you see? He doesn't have enough money right now. He is starting the third command, so he needs a bit more gas. But here we go. First battlecruiser comes in, gets a drone. Will not get the queen. Focusing the queen of Fool's Errand. Oh! That's it. Well, there was transfuse available, but it looks like he was distracted because Clem's Hellions. Oh, nice Ling split. Forces Clem to pull back. If Clem went any deeper, he was going to get surrounded because the Lings were spread out enough. The Hellions wouldn't have done much damage. BC's done jack all, though. BC's not done much at all. Clem needs to get out of here with this BC and go home and repair because he's going to get this repaired up to, to jump in with three or four of these. The lair's very late, so he knows he's got time. Arguably, Clem's going to have five BCs before the Spire is ready. I think Clem is actually best served with patience here. If Clem can basically wait until he's got five, find the Spire with scans, teleport on it, kill it, he'll win the game. You could have 11, 12 queens. You're not going to beat five battle cruisers with that. Because the battle cruisers can stack on top of each other and they've just got so much damage. And suddenly, transfuse isn't very effective. Dark's not building a spire. Dark is not building a. Dark, you got to start that spire right now, dude. You're at 70 workers. He's droning, building lings, double upgrades. He thinks it's one BC? Oh no, Dark thinks this is a single BC into like battle mech build or something like that. Oh my god, he has no idea. Oh, man. Oh, man. Where are those BCs, guys? There we go. Three BCs teleport on the front. He's going for it. He's got to catch these queens. There are 10 queens. Aspire starts in response. And he's... He, I mean, he's got to dive on front on, on the queens. He's going to have to dive on the queens. The aliens fighting the zerglings. The battlecruisers going after the queens. The BCs are not microing quite as well as I think they could. Red hit point BC needs to go home. And the other two BCs are going to get some great damage in the meantime. He's got two BCs building at a time, right? No, he's only got one, but it's almost finished. So that one extra BC can do amazingly. It looks like he is going to swap into battle mech behind it. That's fascinating. So this is not an all-in. Clem's just looking for damage. I feel like he could have done a lot more damage. There's only five queens left. He could have driven into the natural where there was no spore crawler. He could have driven into any of these bases and just killed the spore. Oh, Reddit point BC is going to go down. He loses it. Oh, man. Roach counterattack comes in. Blanded Viking Hellions will clean that up. I definitely think Clem missed an opportunity here. He's committed a massive amount, and he's not getting as much as he probably should have. Spire's almost finished, which means this BC is on a one-way trip. There's not that much money to build Corruptors right now, though. And we've got one Yamato available. The other two coming off cooldown very shortly. And one Queen falls to the Yamato. Another one gets gunned down. Another one gets gunned down. These Overlords are very wounded. And that's a few Overlords going down, a few drones as well. Meanwhile, Roach Counterattack comes in, but the SCVs get pulled. The Hellions, the Cyclones, and the SCVs will be more than a match for these Roaches, even with their 1-1 upgrades about to kick in. Queens are almost all gone. We've got five Corruptors on the way, but the BCs are causing a ruckus. Clem has really been diversifying his play and becoming a bit of a mech player recently, and it is paying off in a big way. Dark is an absolute predator against this man, but uh, lately... Catching his opponents off has been fantastic. The BC is getting Yamato, the first two of these Corruptors. Immediately, the Spores try to move forward. Clem's got to be a little careful about just head-on fighting too many Spore Crawlers because there are seven more Corruptors coming in behind. There's a new Battlecruiser out and more of them building. Tanks and Hellions here as well. The Backstabs did some damage for Dark, but he's only killed 10 SCVs, whereas he's lost 13, and he's actually built so many Spore Crawlers that he's way down. He's going to teleport two of those out. The third one, oh, it gets out as well. This was the one that teleported in that I said would not survive because the Spire timing, but actually he picked off enough of the early Corruptors. It survives. A few SCVs coming down to repair this. And as Dark, you're stuck in a position where you're behind economically. What are you going to do? Do you mass Corruptor to deal with the BCs? Well, then how do you deal with the Hellions on the ground? Blue Flame, Cyclones, all these units being mixed in. Magfield already got made. 
which gives them bonus damage versus absolutely everything. Fourth and fifth factory coming up. I love it. The barracks just being used as add-on builders ever since the early game Reaper Rush. Clem is on fire today. You know, that's so weird. I never thought with two port BC, just make it look like a single BC opening and then <laughs> and then surprise them with a fall. That's such a clever way that Clem did this. And Dark was being so greedy against it. Not, not even building a Spire. He's like, yeah, it's probably just going to be one or two BCs. I can defend that with just Queens. Drone a fourth, go Mass Roach, double upgrades, and then just win the game. So he was super disrespecting Clem, making what I would, I would call a hard read. It's where you don't really have the facts of what your opponent's doing next, but you, you make an assumption based off of like intuition and pattern recognition and that sort of stuff. Look at that, guys. Picks off creep, Yamato's two corruptors, teleports home. That there is what we call the battle cruise attacks. And notice he's doing it in waves. Just two or three BCs. So he's always got some battle cruisers at home if a big attack comes in. Very cool, very cool. Extra command centers are building fourth base fully mining. Clem is on 81 workers. He is in a brilliant position economically. And those Corruptors, Roaches, Ravages all trying to group up. Hellions and Cyclones in the south coming on in. You know, Clem loves to just be in the driver's seat attacking. And I think mixing up his play like he has been with these mech styles really favors his play style. Hellion Cyclone tank taking a pretty good fight. A bio lands, but only one. And with so much Hellion Cyclone to buffer, this is really hard. Darks put all of his money into Corruptors. They don't help against the ground army. Cyclone's getting some juicy lock-ons. Transfuse being used to keep so many units alive, but all that energy, you only get to use that once. And Biles will take out the front siege tank. Are we going to see Yamato on the Ravages? I think he's saving it for the Corruptors right now. The Oh, look at that. Cyclone's locking onto these. Battlecruisers need to get out of there. One of them probably going to fall here. Indeed it does. And he's going to try and kite backwards into the siege tanks, into the Cyclones and the Aliens. One more Yamato goes off. Teleports home. Oh, this is such a good fight for Clem. The way he's microing it, the way he pulled back, used his spells, keeps teleporting the battle cruisers one at a time rather than panicking. So many players would have panicked in this scenario. That guy needs to teleport as well, waits for the perfect time, and he baits Dark into a terrible engagement. Double the cost efficiency for Clem in this game. He's only lost two battle cruisers for 13 corruptors. Corruptors need to trade at at least three to one efficiency to be even close to even with the battle cruisers and when you're trading at uh was that six seven almost seven to one no 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 that is not what you want cyclone alien dancing back and forwards probably time to give this position up but clem has a fifth base behind it his double armory is going as well dark is a beast how is he alive guys he's got a fifth base going up in the north he's actually got a bit of creep spread out there it's still a really bad spot but he's just he's i, I thought he'd be dead here we go alien run by this is a big problem for Dark. Clem's going to get on in there. Forces a scan out, but of course, scan, focus fire on those drones. And at least five or six workers go down. And a bunch of them heavily damaged. Seven workers, not bad at all. 91 SCVs for Clem. He's still building more battle cruisers, cyclones, and hellions in this game. And that forces Dark to build corruptors. But. When you've got so many battle cruisers, eight corruptors isn't necessarily enough. There's five BCs here. Yamato's ready on all of them. And there go five corruptors, just like that. Suddenly you're down to what? Four? Four corruptors are left. Looks like you maybe double Yamato'd one of the units. But even with that small mistake, you, you can't beat these in a fight unless you land piles all over them. Oh my lord. Okay, that BC will fall, but it doesn't matter. Dark is losing the battle, losing the game. Clem. Turax Reaper into two port battlecruiser mech, a very clever way to open up map one. All right, guys, let's get into it. Down here in the bottom right side, we've got Team Liquid's Clem. Very nice start to the series, and he's going onto a map that's a little more favorable for Terran in the top left side, Dark. Now, I think we'll probably just see a more standard three command sensor uh, bio play is what I'd expect here, because it's a good map for him. And uh, as long as he watches out for backstabs, I think he'll be solid. I, I think this map, it's a little harder to sneak backstabs uh, across the map just because it's so small. And those Terran pushes hit you with so little time to set up to, to kind of flank them and all that sort of stuff. Here we go. SCV does come on forward. He's going to be trying to see what goes on. Are you going to be playing some Zerg today? No, guys. Today we just do the weekly cup normally. And uh, I was playing random earlier in it. But we are just going to cast this grand finals and then move on to the next stuff. Maybe play a few games afterwards if we uh, 
have a quick 3-0 finals, maybe? <laughs> we'll see what happens. Reaper's coming on forwards. Drone looking ready to take that third base. Dark's pulled off gas, all but one worker. You can see the gas is trickling in, so he's looking for the standard delayed ling speed. No crazy ling flood shenanigans. Reaper gets a Zergling kill. Nice start. And only building four Zerglings. Oh, Clem almost throws the Reaper away. That was dangerous. Overlord's fully scouted in the main. He sees, okay, yep, you went Reaper into a very quick factory. Oh, so, so Dark is aware that this is a gas first. That's really important. So Dark is going to need to build extra Zerglings, and he should be making Ling speed right now. Because with this build, you have to be very wary of a four Hellion dive. Dark is not respecting it at all. He's going... Actually, he did build an early fourth Queen. So maybe he's deciding, oh, if I just wall off my ramp with three queens, that blocks the Hellion dive. And that is true, it does. So not a bad way to play it. Slow Zerglings do help as well. Sometimes people will even dive just with the first two Hellions and the Reaper. Look at that creep tumor spread, guys. He's so afraid of the Reaper. He's like, oh, I'll put it there. It'll spread a tiny bit, I guess. <laughs> but it can't get sniped, more importantly. Yeah, you can't run past that. Two queens plus a couple of Zerglings to help plug the gap. That'll be very hard to get through. Banshee's on the way behind this with Cloak. Looks like this might be a mech build indeed. And nothing to shoot up. Dark's Overlord just keeps wandering in and wandering out of the base going, still nothing that shoots up? And finally Clem's like, okay, I will, I will build a Marine, fine. Okay, wisely bringing all the Queens together is Dark. He's building three more, so he's going straight to seven Queens. And notice this is going to be a much slower income buildup for Dark than a normal game. But that's because he knows that Clem's income buildup is also slower. He knows that Clem will not have a fast third command center. He's also a little behind on his early command center and his SCV production um, just kind of kicks off slower as a result of all of that. Clem also a bit, he's missing SCV production right now. Finally, that Reaper goes down, scouts the lair starting. It's a pretty late lair, but it does start on up. Hellion's poking in and out and just not finding any drones there. I think Clem's a little paranoid because he's like, why don't you have any drones there? He's used to players not adapting so much, but Dark has realized, hey, you really want to find damage with this fast tech. I'm not even going to give you the opportunity. Banshee cannot get in the back. Dark has got everything on lockdown. You might think, well, dominating. Clem's getting trashed, but the work account's not that impressive. Dark sacrificed a lot to build all these queens, to build all these zerglings, to build these spore crawlers so early. This is not something that comes free of charge. And oh, look at that. Hellions going for the high energy queen. These Hellions, uh, much like those uh, desperate people out there or in the world, looking for a high, high value woman. Looking for that high value, high value queen to, uh, in this case, uh, set light to with a flamethrower. So not, not quite what you want to do when you find yourself a high value partner in life. Warfare works a little bit differently to uh, online and dating advice. But anyways, uh, Evo, Chambers, Roach Horn, all that good stuff coming in. He's kind of prepared for a mass Roach game, which is pretty good against mech. And it is indeed mech. It's going to be Hyper Flight Rotors, so Speed Banshee mech. He's going to be going for that mobility. Overseer sees it as well. He's like, hey, don't you already have Cloak? How come you're still upgrading? I think Dark's going to waffle stomp this game. I think basically Clem has is, is been so aggressive today. He's been trying to get momentum every game. And that's basically how Clem always plays StarCraft. So in terms of being predictable, he is, is an element of predictability in this. And I feel like Clem, he, it worked well game one <clears throat> because he caught Dark off guard with the Proxy Reaper. But this game, Dark scouted everything, not giving him an opportunity. And I worry that Clem is going to get antsy and just run in and get his units surrounded. It'd be very dangerous to run up that ramp. These first four Banshees coming on in. Let's see what damage they can do. Queen Spore are there. The drone runs back from the fourth base, realizing he can't take it just yet. Hyperflight Rotors is almost finished. Behind this, it does look like the Cyclones clean up an Overlord on the third base. Hellions run in and focus some Zerglings down. They better get out of there. They can't fight those Roaches. He's actually just running in and focusing down drones and Zerglings. You mad dog, Clem. All the other Zerglings get down there. I don't think that was worth it. As I said, I'm worried he's going to get uh, over eager and just shove it in. Because that's what Clem does. Clem still has the reckless abandon of a young lad. He doesn't warm things up first. He just kind of shoves it and hopes it works out. <clears throat> now, sometimes it does. But in this case, where Dark is adapting and adjusting, he's like, okay, shut you out. Fourth base on the way. Roach speed. Burrow. Overlord speed. He's getting all the pieces he needs. And I don't think it's game over. Clem can still make magic happen with these Banshees. But it's a big 
lead for Doc. And I'd like to see a Baneling Nest and Baneling Speed come in. Hydroden. Now, I, I really like getting a handful of Hydras to deal with Banshees. I, I think it's totally fine. But in this case, I'm a little confused about Doc's setup. Surely, if you're going to go Hydroden, you might as well just go straight Infestation Pit and rush the Hive for Vipers as well. So Hydrogen on its own is a little confusing. I would expect it to be with those other things as well. Anyways, Queen is going to go down. Banshee's finding himself a little bit of damage. Hellion Cyclone. Oh, you got to be careful not to get surrounded, mate. Sorry, guys. Accidentally bringing up APM tabs, EPM tabs. Hellion Cyclone's getting... Yeah, good wraparound by Dark. He's trapped. The Banshees are going to try and punish in the bottom left side, but there's too many Queens there for that. Oh, and look at this huge catch for Dark. Dark, and it's just such good flexibility. You know, this this just shows Dark's nature to mold himself to his opponent. And basically, his whole style here was, I know what you want. You want to do damage. Terran, gas first players want only one thing, and it's disgusting. You just want to kill my drones. I'm not going to give you any opportunity to do that all game long. And then the moment you, you overstep, I will punish you hard. And that's exactly what he's done in this game. Luckily, the tanks come out at the perfect time, and the fourth command center barely finishes. That's actually a saving grace. If that fourth command center got killed there, that would have been big. I think Dark should have focused that SCB down, clicked the command center. As it is, Clem might be able to bring this back. He's going into mass siege tank right now. Remember, the infestation pit's really late. This is what I'm talking about. Roach Hydra is not a good comp. You don't want to go mass Roach Hydra, guys. I mean, he could make it work because he's dark and he's a bloody wizard, but Siege Tanks counter this. Infestation Pit did just finish. Dark will start the Viper the moment he realizes that. For now, though, he's trying to do some more attacks. Into Banshees? I don't know, man. It's going to be a little rough to make this one work. Swarm Hosts! He's playing Roach Hydra Swarm Host. Oh, I did not see that coming. No Banely Nest either. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. You know what, guys? Tanks are very weak to Swarm Host play. The Banshees are meant to get out there and control the map, but he's got Hydras to push the Banshees back. Oh man, so you need Hellion Cyclone plus the Banshee. But of course, Clem doesn't know. He's building two command centers, he's got a good tank spread, he's sending some Hellions in. These Swarm Hosts could be game enders. Uh, we've got a Hive on the way. He's trying to break the rocks right now. Siege Tank will start to siege forward a little bit. Those rocks will go down though, only getting a few tank shots off on the Zerglings. Hellion's gonna dive in! Big blue flame Bernie boy run by. Very nice run by, I should say, drive by. These guys have broom broom wheels. And they are going to get at least 10 drones here. Not bad. Especially just for aliens. First locust wave comes in, though. Ooh, four siege tanks for the first locust wave. That's what I call a big juicy payoff. Plus two melees on the way. Plus two ranges already finished. And right now, Dark, he's got... Clem pinned. Clem is going Ghost Academy in a second barracks. He wanted to play Turtle Ghost Mech. He ain't there yet. He ain't there yet. If he was maxed out, I think Clem would be okay. But if Dark can just keep getting trades with his Swarmos like he did on the last one, kill three or four tanks each time. Now his Ravager Hydra is going to come in. He's really, he's just going to, he's going to throw it at him. He's going to throw the kitchen sink at Clem right now. Clem is in trouble, man. That is a gigantic army coming in from all sides. He's got some blue flame Hellions that will kill the Locusts pretty quickly. But look at the way he spreads them across the whole army there. All the Roach Ravager Hydra comes in from the left side. Great defense on the right against the Locusts, but a command center falls on the left. He's already lost four SCVs, has Clem. And now the Roach Ravager Lean coming in behind it. Takes out a bunch of those siege tanks. Look at the supply difference. Remember that Dark's Locusts are right now refilling. They're saying, give me a minute, honey. I'll be ready to go again in a sec, I promise. And uh, give him, what, 10 more seconds? Not even. They're going to be ready to fire in just a couple of seconds. And, of course, Clem is still trying to lick his wounds from the previous uh, previous round. A lot of lings coming in. There's not enough Hellions. There's only three Hellions. He needs a lot more Hellions right now. Clem's trying to pull back because he knows he can't deal with this. He needs to siege up versus the ground army, but he needs to unsiege versus the Locusts. And those Locusts are game-ending. Absolutely genius move, especially on a small map like this. Locusts immobility off creep. Not a big weakness when the map is this tiny. Really good way of using Babylon to his advantage. All right, guys, let's go. Dark up here in the top left, looking fantastic using that small map. Hydra Swarmos kind of sucks, but kind of good if your opponent's on siege tanks from your previous aggression and, uh, and all the rest of it as well. Reaper into Marine. Did go for an SCV scout as well. Is Clem going to go back to Bio here? I keep expecting him to go back to Bio, but this is another good map for Mech. So, I, I don't know, man. 
I think he was a little too uh, aggressive with the opening and didn't find enough damage. Like, I think it was just great responses by Dark against the gas first opening. Sixlings this time, so the Reaper will not get any kills. Third hatchery is down. And indeed, third command center. So yeah, back to basics for Clem. Hasn't worked for him in the past. I like that he's got Dark kind of second guessing himself and going, oh, what do you got? Oh God, what is this weird, you know, Reaper rush, BC build. But now it comes like, okay, well, you know, I tried a few funky things. One worked, one didn't. Let's let's go back, back to three command center. Um, he does have a, I was going to say, he could go second factory. He does have the three command center uh, straight to battle mech, no starport build. That, that's a pretty common one. I like that everyone said muted right after I said, ah, I gotta wash my hands, give me a minute. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> and everyone's like, oh god, he's still muted, oh no. Second barracks is on the way, that starport will be building on the, uh, over here soon. He's gonna swap the barracks onto the reactor. So this is just two Hellions straight into bio. This is a nice greedy way to start the game. Clem is basically just going to say, yeah, if you did a crazy all-in, you'd probably get me. But I don't think you're going to do that. So we're just going to go straight up to Stim. Three Marines building at a time. It should be really good. Clem's camera was a bit crazy. But damn. Overlord on the pillar having a bit of a pervy perv. He, he's watching. They don't know about it, though. The Reaper's scratching his crotch and sniffing it, and the Overlord's like, oh, what the frig? These Terrans really are animals. You guys think you guys think the Zergs think that stuff? They're just like, wow, these these Terran are dirty, man. Like, look at them. They're so ugh. Ah, they're not even slimy. They're so dry. Their skin is so dry and not slimy. It's ah, disgusting. <laughs> There's no steam coming out of the eggs on their side or <laughs> bloody, <laughs> they, they, don't, they don't wriggle. There's no steam coming out of their orifices. Like that's freaking weird, man. <laughs> they look at a human butt, they see no steam coming out of it. They're like, ugh. <laughs> uh, I like to think about the Zerg perspective sometimes. Fourth hatchery in the bottom side goes up very early. Dark's got a Roachoran as well. He likes that explosive ability to just get the four bases up. He's going to make lots of Roaches here. Easy crush it versus mech with double upgrades. He doesn't seem to realize it's bio until now. He sees the Marines coming forwards. He's going to build Zerglings. The Roachoran's just finished, but he spent all of his lava on Zerglings rather than Roaches. Already the Marines are going to start pushing in. Plenty of Queens though, seven Queens. But notice how they all got pulled to the front and then Dark sends them back to inject. This is how Dark injects, guys. He just injects off his all-queen control group, and then whenever the Marines push in, he'll pull them all back. So this queen, I don't think she injects. Yeah, because he pulls the queens back to the front. Very common for that to happen with Dark's technique. Oh, here we go. He doesn't even bother scanning. That's interesting. That's very interesting. Fourth base is up. Over 60 workers, but... Terran's going up to five barracks is Clem. So he got his armory. He really needs the armory as his next step after the fourth and fifth barracks. Well, he's actually going six barracks. That's interesting. I think that's a mistake. Barracks are landing over here, trying to pick off what they can. They're not finding any damage, really. I feel like this has been fantastically well defended. And not only that, Clem hasn't seen the Roach Horn or the Roaches. Oh, but... He's not playing Widow Mines anyway, he's playing Siege Tanks. But he needs to keep those tanks at home and just really focus everything on surviving versus the first wave. Still no Armory on the way. Fourth, fifth barracks. Armory is always next, guys. But he's accidentally built a sixth barracks, which has to be a mistake. That's meant to be an Armory. He misclicked barracks instead of Armory, I think. Is A the barracks key? I think he pressed the wrong build menu. He's going to go to start 2-2 and realize he can't start it, I think. Oh, this is kind of awkward for Clem, man. He's building a lot of units right now, which is good because it does feel like Dark's gearing up for a timing. As I say that, Dark does start up seven more workers. Armory does begin. Yeah, I think Clem just realized. I think he just realized. Because he puts his armory on his on his, arm, in his key, right? No, he doesn't. He puts his armory on his... Maybe... I don't know. Definitely a bit of an odd build. Or, oh, he's pushing. He's pushing into Roach Ravager! I mean, it could work if he gets the perfect fight, but he's getting flanked. 
He doesn't even realize, he still doesn't know it's Roach Ravager, that's why. Oh my god, Clem, what the hell? He's shoving so deep up against a guy that's getting ready to flank him. Dark with a brilliant flank from the right side. He's coming in a little slow though. The flank comes in a little late to the party. Does it matter though? Clem has been so aggressive today. It worked game one. But game two and game three, it is falling flat. Dark is just waiting for Clem to step in his territory and then annihilating him. Clem scans, sees no hive, and he's like, oh. Oh, I thought we were, oh. Yeah, Clem, Clem clearly misread this game. I mean, he's been committing just crazy to crazy attacks all day today. It's been working for the most part, but uh, I, I, I have it hasn't felt like he's had the information to know that he could commit to these attacks. He's kind of just yoloing a lot. You only live once, guess what? Conversely, you only die once. And Clem actually takes a very good tail end of this fight. Dark is throwing away a lot of ravages here. But he's already killed 16 workers. He's up about 25 workers here. Plus two attack has started for Clem. Oh, I like the Lings going back in, trying to drag the tank shot onto the friendlies. Clem's trying to win when he has the numbers advantage. With so many medevac healing, he does. Dark needs to back off. He doesn't have a path uh, infestors or banelings. I'm gonna kind of keep forcing them to stim over and over again. Clem picks up, tries to boost home. He's gonna put those siege tanks over on the right side. Very cute. No way to flank there without going all the way around. I don't know. I feel like I need to name this piece of terrain here. This is like the secret path that leads into the bloody temple. The bloody secret garden leading into the temple. I like it. It's one of my favorite parts of the map. Also one of the most abusive ledges, both defensively and offensively, depending on who has longer range units. Clem's still alive in this game. I, 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 I would say I don't know how, but I do know how. He's going to try and counter push, though. He's hoping to catch Dark being greedy. Uh, this has always been Clem's weakness versus Dark. He just has no chill, and, and Dark is flexible, and Clem just keeps attacking into Dark. He did this at Katowice as well in the group stage on uh, Neo Humanity. He had a really good defensive position. He kept unseaging his tanks and just shoving on creep and throwing his army away. Uh, something Clem has done time and again. I mean, it, the thing is, I, I feel like the reason he does this is he kills, like, Lambo with it. He kills, you know, all the EU Zergs with it a lot. He often even gets Rainer and Sarah with it. But Dark is a different breed. Dark is so adaptable. And you're going to see he's going to have a lot of trouble with this. I like that the Marines shove to the left. They force Dark to disengage. But Dark still gets two Siege Tanks with the Biles before getting out of there. Very good moves by Dark. The way he micro that was huge. The Marines in the north are just going to dive on it. The Marines in the south are having trouble. The tank is shelling in the back line. As Marines get a pretty good fight. But Dark is so good at his multi prong. He's happy to punish... And as long as these Ravages get away and he regroups, all these small trades are amazing. Dark's now got Hive on the way. His 2-2 is about to finish, so that'll tie up the upgrades in just a few seconds. And uh, Clem, well, he does dodge the Biles at the last second. He's got to keep doing that again and again. No fourth command center for Clem. It's a three base all in or die trying. He's looking for these good fights. So far, the Biles are mostly being evaded. Occasionally, one lands on the Marines or the Medivacs. But he's just outgunned, he's outnumbered. There's far too much acid out there. And uh, I think he just thought he was up against the Ling play. But even against Ling Bane, pushing as deep on creep as he did this game is rather crazy. Like, Clem is basically just playing super high risk, high reward Starcraft. Looks amazing when it works, and it looks kind of silly when it doesn't. I thought I timed that out perfectly with the GG, but apparently Clem refuses to die and just keeps barely hanging on. You know, he's, he's essentially dead. He sees the hive is on the way as well. He keeps scanning that hive. But uh, yeah, as, as good as the tail end of some of these fights are, and he has traded a few thousand resources better, that's a five base Zerg. He's got, he's got places for his drones to transfer. His fourth has been fully mining with eight gases this whole time. Dark has been loving playing eight gas play lately, just so he can make unlimited ravages and tech units. And uh, the bio is pushing into an arc of Roach Ravager. Never a good spot for the Terran. Creep is on his doorstep. And that should be GG. There we go. GG. Dark taking game three in this best of five. All right, guys. Team Liquid's Clem. He's got to fight back. And he's, he's just got to show a little bit more patience. Uh, Dark has really said, oh, after game one, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to adapt. I'm going to be defensive. Dragon Kaiser Gaming's Dark in the top left. And it just feels like Clem is not really playing the opponent. Uh, it's like he's like, this is how I will play today, you know? And I, I, I want to see him 
mix things up a little more. I, shout out to Dark for hiding the roaches. I think if the roaches had been spotted, Clem might have defended, but over the years, I mean, you guys have heard my thoughts on Roach Ravager, especially if they're making a lot of it off just three bases of workers, like 65 to 70 workers, which is Dark at some point after building about 25 roaches went to like 72, 75, but it, it was mostly massing roaches off three bases. That setup is amazing at shutting down big committed two and three base timings, right? Like three base timings, especially. Um, as a Terran, if you see that, you should just turtle up, do a bit of drop harass without taking any bad fights, keep all your tanks at home, make sure you're unkillable. And when you get closer to max, the Roach Ravager is very bad because it's very supply and efficient. Three supply for a Ravager, two for a Roach, and they both have far lower damage output and short range, and they're kind of clunky. They're big units that get stuck on each other. They get in each other's way compared to the Marine Marauder Siege Tank. Clem, Maru, all the best Terrans in the world are basically famous for seeing Roach Ravager going, cool, I know this is really good at shutting down big attacks. And they'll just grab all their army and shove and just hope that the Zerg's being greedy. And to me, it, it always hurts my head a little bit because I'm like, well, you, you know this is a bad idea. And they're like, yeah, but it might win the game, maybe. And I'm like, oh, okay. And Clem's actually one of the guys I've been least critical of about this, because I think he, he did learn his lesson after losing games like that. To, to I know Serral was using a lot of Roach Ravager recently, but uh, like Rogue and Maru used to be the one that would always grind my gears, because I was such a big fan of both players, but when they'd play each other, they'd both kind of play like idiots. Like there's like this thing where they practice too much together and they'd both just like, it felt like their level of play dropped drastically when they were versing each other specifically. Um, Maru, multiple Katowice semifinals, lost to Rogue simply because he'd like see Mass Roach Ravager and he'd be like, cool. And then he'd just unseage his army, move out and just get killed. And I was like, dude, what? I remember one game he defended the Roach Ravager attack just barely and was in an okay position. And then he unseaged his, his you know, he didn't even unseage. He just picked up his whole bio army and tried to counter drop as the next wave ran in. And it just like killed all of his undefended tanks and won the game. And all he had to do was keep his tanks alive, hold the position between his natural and third and win. Anyway, let's talk about the mass Ling Flood coming in. Dark saw the reactor first build from the two Marines coming out. He knew this was reactor first. He knew there's no Hellions. And if those Marines aren't solid on the ramp, Clem dies. These are bait Zerglings. Dark's trying to bait all the Marines out, but Clem only sends two. So he sends four. Okay, this is obviously bait. No, 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 Clem. Clem, don't take the bait, bro. No, get out of there. Get out of there, Clem. He took the bait. Oh, Clem, Clem, no, no. And these guys take the bait as well. Oh, no. Not like this. Oh, no. <laughs> Where do you think those other two Zerglings came from? He was, ah. Oh. The initial response was so good. If Clem ran up with extra Marines, he needed to run up with an SCV and instantly block with an engineering bay in the wall. If he did that, it would have worked out. But, oh no. Oh, that's a beautiful bait there by Dark. He also sees the fusion core on one base trying to be built and, and it's massive damage. That is huge. Dark can now drone up freely on three base. He's building Queens, a Roach Warren. I mean, he's in, he's in an amazing position. That's basically series over right there. I, I could say Clem's a beast. He'll try to fight back. But uh, yeah, this counter drop needs to do damage. Now, you might be wondering, what is his build? He's doing the 1-1-1. One, one, one. You guys want to search the fastest uh, pig daily number 174, I want to guess. Uh, that's a random number I pulled out of my butt. But uh, if you search up, there's, there's an episode I did on my YouTube. If someone can find it in my Twitch chat and link it up, I'll, I'll link it for everyone. Um, the fastest possible marine drop. So basically, man, like, off of one racks expand, fastest possible marine drop. I remember I had that as the title, fastest marine drop, and there was like, I've had years of people commenting on that video being like, well, actually, I can hit a, double, a drop with eight marines and a medevac at two minutes 30 if I just don't build any SCVs for the whole, and I'm like, okay, no, 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 I'm talking about off a normal one racks expand, and I'm talking about two medevacs filled with marines. Either way, to cut it short, it's meant to be uh, hit at about four minutes 30, and you hit with 14 marines, one widow mine, two medevacs. You don't have stim. You're wide open to any sort of aggression on the ground. So you really need to try to hide the fact that you're doing it, which Clem did not do because he showed both marines at the same time early game. Should have just showed one of them. 
Uh, but yeah, basically, you're looking to get in there at 4 minutes 30 with this drop with a bunch more Marines in a Widow Mine. They've usually only got like four or five queens and a couple of zerglings, and you can sometimes even kill the third base. Gumiho invented the build. He did it versus Dongregu on King Sejong Station in 2016, I believe. It was 2016 when we were using some of the older maps. Uh, had come back into rotation uh, in Legacy of the Void. Trying to go second and third factory. Clem's going to try and work his way back into this game, but that is 10 roaches. He's got a Banshee starting up. He's got a Battlecruiser, but unfortunately the Battlecruiser has just teleported in. Oh, there's a spore crawler and a lot of queens ready for it. So he's going to lose the battle. Yeah, it's it's done. And oh, we've, we've just got to... we got to revel, guys, in Dark's gloriousness. I, it's He's so good at doing this sort of thing, man. Sorry, let's go back. When was the bait? Like 3.30? 4 minutes? Something like that? Yeah, this was glorious. He's got the Overlord as well, so he's got, like, great vision. And he's like, hey, look, here's... Here's the... Oh, I'll just... Oh, look, a free SCV. Let's get him. Woohoo. And then he's like, oh, here's two more lings that were conveniently waiting just outside with the 30 lings that are waiting. And then he pulls four more marines. Just a huge mistake. Even here, if he pulls those marines and gets a solid line of them on the ramp and then pulls SCVs, mineral walks to the main, pulls some more SCVs to help fight, he might be able to hold. But the fact that he F2s down here, huge mistake. And uh, that really cost him. Like I said, if he moved up with all of his marines and brought an SCV to plonk an eBay down, he could have killed the one or two lings blocking, three or four lings, and maybe got the eBay down. High risk, but would have been awesome. But uh, one of the big weaknesses of this build is, yeah, you just don't have Hellions. So even Zerglings running in is such a big problem. GG, well played. Clem playing one of the most fantastic strategies ever in game one. And even here, all the other games was really creative, interesting styles. The previous game probably being the most uh, the most standard of them all. But really cool to see him mixing up this old build order, trying it out. Unfortunately, it fell completely flat in this game. Dark showed knowledge of how to take advantage of it. He's played against it many times years ago, and he, he remembered the counter, which is if you can lure their Marines off the ramp, surround him with Zerglings, it's game over. GG, well played.